Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Intel's non-K can overclock on cheaper boards. Why AMD's new GPU is so bad? Nvidia is trying for a terrible GPU themselves. Intel's doing the unthinkable, and Intel's flagship Alchemist GPU beats this. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that the German overclocker Der Bauer recently found that you can overclock Intel's new non-K parts, and that's due to the company letting you change more individual parameters of the BCLK overclock. At the time, the feature was only supported on certain expensive Z690 boards, so it took away from this being a great budget solution. Well, in a new video, Der Bauer actually confirmed that the ASUS ROG Strix B660G and B660F boards support BCLK overclocks. Now, unfortunately, these only support DDR5, but when prices move down, that could be a great option. He was actually able to overclock the 12400 to 5GHz across all cores, which gave it performance in Cinebench nearly that of AMD's 5800X. Very impressive. Now, with that said, Intel has released a statement on this which basically says the non-K models aren't made for overclocking and that it will void your warranty, so keep that in mind. Luckily though, it doesn't sound like they plan to stop it, though there are rumors that they may soon. But first, while GP prices are still absurdly high, there's one thing you'll never have to overpay for again, and that's your VPN. Because today I have a huge deal from this video's sponsor, Atlas VPN. The fully fledged VPN with not only great prices, but everything you need to protect your data and more. I'm talking support for all of your devices, over 500 plus servers across the world, a no log policy, and even the ability to unlock geo restricted content, like movies and shows that you normally couldn't see in certain countries from Netflix, Hulu, and other popular streaming apps. They even have a free data breach monitoring tool to see whether your personal details have ever been leaked. And today, they've partnered with me to bring you an amazing deal. Along with 86% off the price for three years, you'll also get three free months. So don't wait and pick up this great deal by visiting the link in the description below. Next up, if you think AMD's new RX 6500 XT is a terrible GPU, you're not alone. For one, it's supposed to be a budget card, yet it basically requires PCI Express 4.0, which is only supported on the newest boards. Then it only comes with 4GB of VRAM, lacks certain video encoding, it's bad. Well, in a new post from AMD's Linux architect, John Bridgman, Navi24, which is the GPU that powers the 6500 XT, was primarily made for laptops paired with their new Rembrandt APUs, which support PCI Express 4.0 and full video encoding and decoding. Basically, while AMD released Navi24 on desktop, it wasn't really meant for that, which explains the absurd limitations. Of course, that doesn't excuse AMD's poor release, but it at least gives us an explanation. And speaking of the RX 6500 XT, Nvidia looks to be giving AMD a run for their money for worse GPU launch. In a new graph shown on Nvidia's RTX 3050 page, they compare performance between the RTX 3050, GTX 1050, and 1650. Here's the thing though, two of the three games they compare it to have ray tracing turned on, meaning they're comparing the RTX 3050 with cards that don't support RTX ray tracing, meaning it's essentially the most pointless comparison ever. You can see that both cards are sitting at zero FPS, given they don't have that feature. That's like saying your card is better at gaming than a GPU without a video out. Well, no duh, Nvidia, it can't game, so why even compare it? Then they randomly stick Borderlands 3 in the mix, which doesn't have ray tracing support, and wow, the other GPUs can actually play the game. Yay! Okay, jokes aside, it is at least nice to see Nvidia support ray tracing across their entire product stack. But this was just sad, and it makes me wonder why they felt the need to make this comparison in the first place. Next up for today, Intel has done the unthinkable. In the upcoming ISCC conference scheduled for February, Intel has a presentation that's under chip releases. And as you can see, it's titled Bonanza Mine, an ultra low voltage energy efficient Bitcoin mining ASIC. Now, with it being an ASIC or application specific integrated circuit, this isn't a GPU. And really, Bitcoin isn't the cryptocurrency that's taking GPUs left and right. But here's the issue. 
Depending on the node it's built on and the profit Intel gets compared to GPUs or CPUs, they could make more of these over other components, meaning there's a limited amount of things one company can make. Of course, if these are on a completely different node than their GPUs and CPUs, then it may not have a big effect, though there's also shortages in other parts of the supply chain, so any incentive to allocate things elsewhere could be bad. Time, as always, will tell. Lastly for today, we finally have a good benchmark to compare Intel's upcoming high-end desktop Arc GPU. It was originally found by resident leaker Tom Mapasak, and the benchmark comes from the SciSoft database. As you can see, it's Intel's 512 EU model, so this should be their most powerful part. Not only that, but it's clocked at 2.1 GHz, which is seriously impressive. This is clearly a newer part that should give us a real idea of performance. Now, it only shows us 12.8 GB of VRAM, but as video cards mentions, that's likely just an error that shows a partially allocated frame buffer. It should have 16 GB of GDDR6. Either way, when looking at the general score, we can see that it actually beats NVIDIA's RTX 3070 Ti. In other tests, it more or less trades blows with the 3070 Ti. Of course, this isn't really a gaming test, but it shows the general processing power of Intel's upcoming card, and it looks to be right at what we've been hearing, maybe even a little better. Of course, as mentioned before, the release timing is very much important. Remember that Intel recently took Q1 off their release window for ARC. Shortly after, some claim that Intel is still planning to release the cards in Q1, but they technically only said the first Alchemist products, which could easily just mean mobile. And that goes back to where I noticed that Intel went from showing a desktop and a laptop with Q1 to just a laptop at CES. Of course, if AMD and Nvidia's next-gen parts are hard to find, but Intel's aren't, then it doesn't really matter how powerful their parts are. Gamers will buy whatever's available, and at least Intel's part is looking to be fairly powerful. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs? Or are you just shocked at the blunders both AMD and Nvidia have been doing recently? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!